Hello and greetings from Iceland, but here we go again, things are still happening. And I'm starting today's journey with this earthquake time-lapse that is showing you all earthquakes on a peninsula from January 1st this year until yesterday. But note that I have another one online that shows you the whole year 2020 and I'm linking to it since it was also showing the build-up to the ongoing situation. But it did start in 2020 when we noticed the land uplift under Mount Thorbjörn just by Grindavík. But this one is showing us how widespread the earthquake were before the eruption and how scary it was to get them so close to Grindavík. And I'm adding this volcano icon to the time-lapse where the eruption starts. And from there you can see them fade out little by little. But uh, every now and then we see unusual earthquake swarms on the westernmost part of the peninsula and offshore as well. But I was there with my drone just a few days ago and got the footage I need for that story. But uh, I suspect that we might see something more to unfold there. And the history of this part of the peninsula is just so worth looking at when it comes to the bigger picture. So that video will be online soon. But as for the latest news, it's not getting any better. The biggest earthquake so far struck around noon today, measuring 3.8. And we are more or less looking at the same scenario as in March, before the eruption began. And since we are on that place, I have to mention that every 50 years or so, a big earthquake strikes Reykjavík, up to 6.5, and its origin is in those mountains here, south of Reykjavík. So one of our worries is that uh, unrest under Keilir could trigger it. So it is not just Keilir that we are worried about now. And uh, here we have another time-lapse. And this is how the last uh, three days look, and I am letting the earthquakes accumulate on the map this time, starting on September 28th, and the last frame is today at 3 o'clock GMT, and we are just by Mount Keilir, and this is of course not very scientific. I'm just trying to simplify the information and bring them to life as well. And everything is telling us that a new chapter is about to begin. So what is to expect? It is of course hard to predict anything, and I'm not going to make any predictions as such, nor do I want you to uh, get the idea that I have got some extra good insight into the subject. But uh, just like those who comment on my site, I'm just expressing my thoughts of uh, what might uh, be to come. And I do have the feeling that this will grow into a new eruption, or this will wake up the Keltingdalir eruption that has been dormant now for like uh, almost two weeks. We do see that the tremor activity has also been growing rather fast by the volcano, but then it might just be the earthquakes. But what we know for sure is that uh, during the prelude to the Keltingadalir eruption, that Mount Keilir started three weeks earlier to shake the capital region like it's doing now. And this is how it started, on the same place as now, and almost at the same depth. But back then, the earthquakes started at seven kilometers depth, but this time they were starting uh, at uh, 6.3 kilometers depth, and uh, many of them are getting closer to 5 now. And in this photo, covering the months after the eruption started, we can clearly see the dike from where the eruption came up. It was at uh, 2 kilometers depth, and we can see how it split up, and the magma took off west to Geldingendalir, where it suddenly, bloops, came up, and we didn't even see it coming on the seismometers. So just talking from common sense, it took three weeks from the magma to move from a seven kilometer depth and break its way through the crust under Geltingadalir. And since the magma has done a lot of tunneling already, one might guess that uh, it should even take it a shorter time now to reach the surface. But first, we will for sure see some more earthquake activity, and they might get larger, even close to five. But as our experts said, it is just as much pressure down there as before the Geltingadalir eruption. And what do we know? We might uh, even see a larger eruption this time, because after all, the Geltingadalir eruption, and I'm quoting one of our experts, said the day it began that it was just a lame eruption, the smallest and weakest that he had ever seen in his life, way too small to ruin his weekend. 
but it turned out to be what it was and the lava flow peaked five months after it started. So I am wondering, is the Keltingadalir eruption just a magma side lane, but the highway is still under construction on the way through the crust or what? But anyways, this is the status now, Friday afternoon, and according to the earthquake pattern, we should get a fairly big one before I finish editing, so I might have to add some text information before I can upload this, but things are clearly getting a bit hectic again. I do doubt that we will see an eruption come up in the next days. It's possible though, but my wild guess is that this will develop into an eruption within three weeks. And I will follow up on this during the weekend. I'm also finalizing other videos with a bit nicer side of our nature. But this volcano is literally burning up a lot of my time. So some of my other content isn't getting out as fast as I would prefer, but that's just how it is. My channel took off from this content and my plan is of course to cover this better than I did in March with a bit more experience and technology than I had then. So I welcome new subscribers since my channel needs all the support you can get and with that I am sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.